James Stewart as the Six Shooter. The man in the saddle is angular and long-legged. His skin is sun-dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl. Its handle unmarked. People call them both the six-shooter. The NBC radio network presents James Stewart as the six-shooter, a transcribed series of radio dramas based on the life of Britt Ponson, the Texas plainsman who wandered through the western territories leaving behind a trail of still-remembered legends. About the last place I expected to be that Tuesday was the town of Powder Creek. The Double G Ranch where I'd been working was clear on the other side of the territory, and either oh, about 200 miles away. But when Sam Griffith, he's the owner of the Double G, when Sam got a chance to buy off Forrest Trench Herd, he sent me over to close the deal. So the next thing I knew, I was walking down the main street on my way to the bank where I was supposed to meet Trent. Gee, well, it sure was a nice day. Kind of Indian summer-like. A lot warmer than it had a right to be in October. The sun had fooled the maple trees into thinking it was spring. A couple of them beside the Civil War cannon in the square were even starting to bud. The two fellows sitting underneath it playing checkers in their shirt sleeves, eh? Well, it looked like the sun had fooled them, too. <laughs> Howdy. Just a minute, mister. Just a minute till I make this move. There. That ought to hold you, Jonah. Yeah. Now, uh, what was it you wanted, mister? Oh, I didn't want anything. I just said howdy, that's all. Oh, howdy. Well, speak to the man, Jonah. He spoke to us. It's my move now. I'll do my talking afterward. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Howdy. Ah, oh, it's a nice day. Yeah. Well, so long. Uh, hold up there a minute, son. Hmm? Say, uh, see that gun of his, John? Mm, yep. You, uh, you ain't Brett Ponsett, the six-shooter. My name's Ponsett, yeah. You hear that, John? He's Brett Ponsett. Yep. And we was kind of wondering when you was going to show up, Mr. Ponsett. Been expecting him for the last month or so. What's that? Yeah, when you got to jump, you got to take it. That's the rule. All right, all right, yep. Jonah. All right, I know the rule. Well, we'll take it and take it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> there. You satisfied? Yeah. You, you you said something about expecting oh, why, me. Oh, sure. Look. Ever since we heard the news, congratulations. Why? He said congratulations. Now well, let's get on with the game. All right. Yeah. You're moving. Yeah, how in thunder should I know all this chattering going on? Well, I don't like to keep you interrupting, but I wonder if you would mind explaining just what you meant by... by... Jonah's trying to think. Yeah, I know, but what I... I don't what I... want him to claim I beat him because we kept him from concentrating. No, 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 of course not. No, I, I just... Well, I knew that the Trent cattle would turn out to be good stock. The Double G was lucky to be buying them. But since they weren't going to belong to me, I couldn't see why congratulations were in order. Unless folks in Powder Creek had heard wrong, unless they thought I was outfitting a ranch of my own. And I started to explain things to the fellows playing checkers, but they shushed me again, good, good and loud this time. So I gave up and went on town toward the bank. I was just passing by the newspaper office when I bumped into Quint Todd. He was editor of the Powder Creek Press, a weekly newspaper. Matter of fact, he was more than just an editor. Quince Paw had retired in the last six or seven years, and he was putting out the paper practically single-handed. Good afternoon, Quint. Huh? Yeah. Oh, it's you, Ponset. So you finally got here, huh? Well, I'm here, if that's what you mean. I didn't realize folks were so anxious about me. Some of us are anxious, maybe. Some of us ain't. Ah. Uh -huh. What, are you, you upset about something, Quinn? Why should I be upset? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. If the things are all right, aren't they? I mean, with the paper. And... Paper's fine. I'll save you the next issue so you can see your name in print. See my... Well, I sure can't think of any reason why you'd be writing about me. It's customary, ain't it? What? It's customary to write about the groom. The groom? The what? what? I'm busy now, Ponce. I got a story to run down. Oh, Quinn, no, what? I Listen hope you'll to... be real happy. Both of you. 
No, but Quint, I... Hey, for Pete's sake, where we Quint! Well, he'd lost his senses. That's the only explanation of that. Quint Todd had just plain lost his senses. That me being a groom. Me? And who in the Sam Hill did he think I was going to marry? How... I, I hadn't even been keeping company. Not that I have anything against marriage, you understand. I... Like people say, it's an institution, a, a noble institution. Why, some of my best friends are married. And I, I suppose someday, not right away, of course, not very soon, but someday, maybe I'll... Well, I... Hey, I'll... little bit. I was on my way to meet you. Huh? Huh? Hey, what's the matter? You look like you just fell off a bronc. Oh, hello, Trent. I uh, guess I was kind of preoccupied. I was thinking about something. Oh, well, I reckon we shouldn't expect you to have all your faculties in good working order. <laughs> Not at a time like this, huh? Huh? What? <laughs> oh, sure was a surprise. Never thought I'd see the day when some woman would put a saddle on you. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, we better get over to the bank. I told Mr. Fredericks we'd be there uh, by three about... Uh, he's drawing up the papers. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, Trent. Yeah? Now, about me getting married, the fact of the matter is, I... Oh, Fred, you know I was just joshing with that saddle tall. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I well, know, I know. Truth, but... It's high time you did put down some roots. Maybe so. Maybe yes, so, Trent. Yes, you I... just wait till you got a family of your own. Why, you'll be a different man. Oh, that's possible. <laughs> that's possible, Trent. Uh, but just where did everybody get the notion that I was almost well, ready to... Now, you didn't think you could keep it a secret, did A you? secret? <laughs> well, you ought to know Minnie better than that. Minnie? <laughs> yeah, that's who told me. Well, of course, there'd been rumors going around for several weeks, but until I heard it from Minnie herself... Oh, wait, wait, hold on here. You mean Minnie Flint? Well, who else would I mean? It's her niece you're marrying, ain't it? <laughs> What are you acting so strange about? Uh, really? Look, uh, uh, now, I just want to get this straight. Minnie Flint told you I was marrying her niece? Well, she told everybody. I say. Well, now, Britt, I, I know how a man feels when he's getting ready to jump overboard. <laughs> I felt the same way myself, sort of awkward and embarrassed. Well, be that as <laughs> you it may. folks sure. didn't know about it so they wouldn't poke fun the way they always do. <laughs> uh, but you can't blame Minnie for spreading the news. Well, I sure do blame her. Well, now, Britt, Minnie's been like a mother to Helen, raised her since she was a baby. Well, Helen ain't never had no folks of her own. I know that. I know that. Well, then, you shouldn't mind Minnie being proud. Why shouldn't she do a little bragging, huh? Well, of course. Uh, the women folks around here seem to think you're quite a catch. Oh, now, listen, Diane. Now, Trent, well, let me tell you something. Here's the bank. I suppose that you'll want to get this business done with pronto so you can get straight over to Minnie's place, huh, Rip? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I w would like to get over to Minnie's. <laughs> Just a minute, I'm coming. <gasps> Brit. You mind if I come in, Manny? Why, uh, well... Excuse me. Uh, Thanks. Well, it's sure nice to see you, Brett. I didn't have any idea you were in Potter Creek. I didn't have any idea at all. Uh-huh. You're, uh, you're just passing through, ain't you? You're not staying. Oh, uh, some folks seem to think I am. I... At least long enough to get married. Oh, you've heard. Well, so is everybody else, as far as I can tell. Your announcement of my engagement seems to have blanketed the whole town. Now, Britt, I can explain. Well, that's why I'm here. Why don't you just sit down over there on the sofa? I've got some oatmeal cookies out in the kitchen. I just made them this morning. Manny? Yes? You just uh, can forget about the cookies. I really don't have much of an appetite. Oh. Well... I'm waiting, men. Well, uh, you see, Britt, I only did it for Helen. Now, she's a fine girl, and what I... I wanted to help her out. Oh. On account of Quint. Uh, Quint Todd. They've been going together for nearly six years now, but he just never seemed to get around to asking her to marry him. Well, he must have his reasons. A man usually does. Oh, it's because of his father. You see, Quint's been taking care of old man Todd ever since he retired. And it must cost money, him being so sickly all the time. Uh-huh. But 
Clint could have married her. Helen don't expect a lot of fancy clothes in a fine house. She's the practical type. I, I, just, just what has this got to do with me? Well, I, I had an idea. I thought if maybe there was somebody else, if Clint believed Helen was interested in another man, well, maybe he'd come to his senses and take the bull by the horns and uh, marry her himself. Uh, you've been sort of using me as a decoy. Is that uh, the idea? I knew you was working for the double G. It didn't seem likely you'd be showing up in these parts. Uh, not for the time being, anyhow. And afterward, well, after Clint and Helen tied the knot, then it wouldn't matter. Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, men, both you and Helen. You don't think she knew about it? She didn't? Of course not. I didn't dare tell her. Why, she'd have never stood for it. Well, then how on earth did you manage to convince her that I was, uh, that I was uh, interested? I've got a sister living over in Black Mountain. Uh, that's not far from the double G. No, but what I mean is, how did you ever... Well, I... Hmm? There are some letters and asked her to post them for me. They were... Uh, they were love letters. But I sort of changed my handwriting and uh, signed your name. Many Flint. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I guess you might as well know the rest, too. Uh, when Helen answered them, uh, when she wrote back to you, well, I kind of saw to it that her answers never got mailed. Well... Well, I just don't know what to say. Oh, I never dreamed it'd go I this just... far, Britt. I was sure Clint would start talking serious when he first found out that you and Helen were corresponding, but he didn't. And then, well, I thought maybe if your letters got a little more uh, sincere, uh, well, maybe that would make him jealous. I left him around where he couldn't help seeing them whenever he come calling. You didn't actually propose in my name. Oh, no. Well. Britt. Well, uh, n not in so many words, right. but uh, reading between the lines, well, that's how Helen took it. She wrote you her answer two weeks ago. She wrote yes. What? Your, uh, your letters were mighty convincing. Well, then you better start figuring out some way of unconvincing her. Well, I don't know. Maybe... L look, men, now, uh, Helen's got to know the truth. And if you won't do it, well, I'll just have to tell her all about it myself. Because... Oh, Constantine, I guess maybe he'd get... Oh. What, Brent? What? Well, are you here already? Hello, Helen. Oh, my goodness. It sure is good to see you, Brent. You're, you're looking fine. I oh, saw so you, Helen. I so saw you. Uh, I, I wish I'd known you were coming. I wouldn't have been out doing the market. No, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Oh, Brent, I just got to tell you. Maybe I shouldn't say it right out like this, but well, ever since I was a little girl, I've looked up to you so. I, it just seemed to me you were the finest man that ever came through Powder Creek. Now, now, Helen. Uh... Of course, I, I never guessed that someday, well, that you and I... Oh, Britt, I'm so happy about it. Excited and happy. I just hope you're as pleased as I am. Are you, Britt? Uh, 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 sure, uh, Helen. Uh, sure, sure. We'll return to James Stewart as the six shooter in just a moment. Every man and woman in the armed forces will tell you the only call that takes precedence over mess is mail call. And when a letter is more important to a hungry G.I. than food, you know it means something. And the truce in Korea is no reason why we should stop writing letters to our men and women in service, whether in U.S. camps or overseas. Mail from home is just as important now as it ever was. Oh, yes, and be sure to mail your soldiers' Christmas packages this week in that way, you'll be sure he'll receive them in time to make his Christmas away from home a little more cheerful. Now, Act Two of The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart as Britt Ponsett. <laughs> A 
There just wasn't anything else to say. There just wasn't. I couldn't tell Helen that I'd never really thought about her in a Marion way. And besides, many, she caused all the trouble. It was, his, it was her place to set things right. Min didn't open her mouth. No, she just stood there staring at us through her bifocals, real pleased with herself. Well, the next thing that happened was Helen invited me to supper. Oh, boy, I sure didn't want to accept. All I wanted to do was just get out of the house and get out of Powder Creek, too, but... But what I wanted to do and what I did were two different things. I went back to the hotel where I was stopping, changed my shirt, and I rode out to Minnie's again. I guess Britt doesn't like my cooking at Minnie's. Hardly eating a thing. Oh, it's not that, Helen. Everything is fine. As I had a pretty big dinner at noon, and it uh, c- kind of stayed with me. More coffee, Britt. No, no thanks, man. Well, you'll have to tell me your favorite food, Britt, so I'll know what to fix after... I, uh, well, I sort of like most everything. Apple pie, I bet. Most men like apple pie. Why, whenever Quentin and I went... Oh. Uh, speaking of Quentin, I ran into him today. I'd just as soon not discuss him. Always, always seemed to me to be an awful nice sort of a fella, Quint. Please, Britt. Oh, 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 sorry. Well, <clears throat> I'll just rid up the table. Oh, here. Here, let me help No, you. no, no. I can manage. Besides... You two have lots of things to talk over. Well, all right. Real warm night for this time of year. Moon, too. A harvest moon. Oh? I, I, I hadn't noticed. We ain't taken down the porch swing yet, Britt. Oh, that's all. It... Uh... Might be kind of nice to sit outside for a spell. Well, whatever you say, Helen. Whatever you say. Are you sure you're not too cold out here? Oh, no. Uh-huh. No, I'm fine. Besides, if I do get chilly... You could sort of... <coughs> Helen. Yes, <coughs> <sir>. uh, <coughs> Helen, uh, about, about us getting married, uh, we uh, we may not be able to have the wedding right away. Oh? Uh, well, you see, over at the Double G where I'm working, there's no place we could live. Well, you, you wrote me you had a cabin all to yourself. I did. And you said it would fix up real easy that... There'd be plenty of room for both of them. Well, it would. It would have fixed up easy, Helen. But last week, there was a kind of a fire, and that cabin just burned right down to the ground. Oh, I see. There's nothing left of it now but just a few ashes. And that's one of the reasons I came over here to Powder Creek to explain about us having to postpone the ceremony, you see. Well, you don't have to stay at the Double G, do you? Yes, I do. Yes, yes, I do. I, I signed up for all the next year. Don't have any choice. So maybe maybe we ought to not be formally promised. I mean, if somebody else came along, I wouldn't blame you not for waiting. Britt, there won't be anybody else. Oh, you never know. You, know, you never and, know. And, and a year isn't very long to wait. A year isn't long at all. No, no, I guess not. But just in case. Waiting. Just... I've got an idea. We don't have to wait. Hey, we uh, can be married right away before you go back to the double G. Then afterward, I can stay on with that men. There'd be times when we could be together, when when you come over to Powder Creek for a week or so, like now. I never thought of that. You, you don't seem very anxious, Britt. From the sound of your letters, I thought you wanted to get married. Right oh, now. sure. Oh, sure. That's... It's just... I... Oh. Oh, well... Well, looks like somebody's riding up this way. Why, it's Quint. Quint Todd. Oh. Oh! I'm going in the house, Britt. I don't want to talk to him. Oh, no. Well, I, I thought you and Quint used to be pretty good friends. Yeah, that's been... all we were, just friends. He didn't mean anything to me, not really. Oh, well, you sure start running every time the name's mentioned. I'm you? not running. Oh. All right, I'll stay. Yeah, well. Oh, evening, Quint. Hello, Ponsett. Helen. Good evening. You left word at the press office you wanted to see me. I left word? Uh, No, no, he means me, Helen. What? 
Uh, well, I figured he'd want to get the details on our plans. The paper comes out tomorrow, doesn't it? That's right. Yeah, well, I... I just want to tell you, you couldn't have come at a better time. You see, we just finished settling things. The ceremony's going to be this week. Haven't decided on a day yet. How's Friday, Helen? Oh, well, well, yes, yes. The sooner the better. The sooner the better. Friday, then. Church wedding. Oh, of course, of course. I want everybody to come. Everybody in town. You better say so in the paper. There won't be time to send out formal invitations. You're invited, too, of course, Quint. I'll try and make it. There won't be much of a honeymoon. I'm heading back for the double G first part of next week. Helen's going to stay here with her aunt. Gee, she's going to stay in Powder Creek? Uh, for the time being, anyway. Uh, don't sound like much of a marriage to me. Well, it's not the way we'd prefer it, but of course, you know, you can't always fix things up perfect. You have to take the better with the sweet, you know. Yeah, well, when I get married, I'll have a house for my wife and some money in the bank. There are more important things than houses and money. You never said so before. I never said I wanted a house of my own, did I? Well, no. But I couldn't ask you to move in with me and Pa, the way he's ailing all the time. That was just an excuse. If you loved me, you'd have asked. I did love you. You must have known I did. How was I to know? There's there's no point in hashing it over now. Good night. No, no, hold on, hold on now. Hold on, Quint. Now, just just, just a minute. Now, I want to get this thing straight now. I, I could hardly believe my ears just now. You you said you were in love with Helen? I still am, if you want to know it. Quiet. Well, I sure don't like the sound of this. I, uh, Helen's engaged to me. How I feel about her doesn't matter. It's how she feels that counts. Oh, ah, but if you're in love with her, now how do I know she's not in love with you? It's pretty plain that she isn't. I don't know. I don't know. You know, being in love usually works both ways, you know. I don't know about this. Well, Helen, what about this now? Fred, you you know I, I don't care anything about him one way or the other. Now, is that the truth? You talking the truth now? You, you, we're not starting our marriage on a lie now, are we? Well, maybe I was fond of Quint once, but that was before... Well... You're all over it now. All over it. Are you sure? I'm promised to you. Yeah, yeah, but I, uh... I, I wouldn't hold you to that promise. As a matter of fact, I'd insist you break it if I thought there was somebody else. Well, that's mighty generous of you, Britt. But you don't need to worry. Of course, if our marriage didn't go through, I'd be kind of upset. Hurt, maybe. Oh, I wouldn't ever hurt you, Britt. Not for anything. Oh, I'd get over it, Helen. I'd get over it. A man always does. At least I always have before. Sure. Oh, sure, sure. Lots of times. Oh, yeah. You wrote me that I was the only girl you, you ever... Oh, oh well, I, I... To tell you the truth, I, I, what I meant was that uh, you were the only girl I'd ever been engaged to, you see. Oh. That's what I meant. <laughs> looks to me like the choice is up to you, Helen. Yes, yes, I... I think that's the way I see it, too. If you're smart, you'll choose Ponset. I sure haven't got anything to offer you. Just a small-town newspaper that wouldn't even give us a decent living. Oh, now, stop talking yourself down, Quint. Now, the Powder Creek Press, one of the finest weeklies in this part of the country. Now, you know that. Well, Britt, he's a six-shooter. Why, he's practically famous. All I am is a cowpoke. I'm just an old cowpoke. I don't even know whether I'm going to have a job from year to year. Just just the same. Just an old cowpoke. Any girl in the territory would be pleased. Oh, be quiet, both of you. I think neither one of you wants me. I know who you are and what you are, and I know which one I'm... Well, which one I... Britt. Uh-huh. You're getting a fine man, Helen. Quint, I told you to be quiet. Britt, I'm sorry. I hope you won't think that I'm, I'm fickle or, or don't know my own mind. But, well, you... You are the sick shooter. You don't really need a wife. Helen, you don't mean you're going to take me. And Quint... Well, he needs somebody to look after him. I've seen that house of his. Well, I'll bet the place hasn't had a good spring house cleaning for the last four years. But Quint's father, he's a nice old man. And with a woman to look after him, maybe he won't be so sickly all the time. Well, you still haven't said that you love Quint. I... I guess I've been in love with him ever since. You won't think too badly of me, Quint. No, no. No, I... It's kind of a blow, I guess. But like I said, it'll take a little while to get over it, and I'll 
I'll manage somehow. I'll, uh, uh, I'll manage. Well, I left Quint and Helen standing out there on the porch. I went inside to get my hat. Minnie was hovering by the front window. When she saw me, she shut it real quick and tried to appear innocent. Well, it looks like your scheme finally worked out, man. My scheme? Seems to me it was more yours than mine. Well, what, what are you talking about? You know very well that you're asking Quint over here tonight was what brought things to a head. Well, I, I just wanted to make certain he had all the facts about our wedding, that's all. Well, so the story in the paper would be accurate. Oh, that's sure, all. Bit, sure, I know. <sighs> Poor Quint. What? Well, I guess he deserves it after making her wait all this time. Well, what do you mean, Minnie? Well, I was just thinking... He's going to have to toe the line real close, and he's not going to win many family arguments, neither. Well, I don't see why well, not. Well, I'll tell you why not. Every time Helen has trouble with him, all she'll say is, don't forget I could have married the six-shooter, but I gave him up for you. And Quint will just have to sit there and take it, no matter how often she says it. Oh, now, man, you know. Well, Quint and Helen were married the following Sunday. I stayed over for the wedding. Matter of fact, I was best man. Both of them insisted on that. But I didn't enjoy the ceremony very much. I, uh, I kept thinking that, you know, th that it could have been me standing there saying the I do's. And, gee whiz, I sure was a close call. The Six Shooter is an NBC Radio Network production in association with Review Productions. It is based on a character created by Frank Burt, and the transcribed story is written by him. Mr. Stewart may currently be seen in the Universal International picture, The Glenn Miller Story. Others in the cast were Barbara Eiler, Virginia Gregg, Bill Johnstone, Sam Edwards, and Herb Biker. Special music for this program was by Basil Adler, and the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. This is Hal Gibney speaking. Tonight here, Angela Lansbury in the NBC Star Playhouse on the NBC Radio Network.